Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets. And as we close last week's show, Miles, you and I really kind of predicted that it would be a little bit more volatile. There would be more fireworks today. And instead, you know, as expected, the Fed did not rate hike and the markets really did not react to the reality of that news. So we'll get to the charts in a little bit, but let's summarize what came out of the Fed minutes, because that is a big reason why we record on Wednesday afternoons for Thursday publication, is we can bring that information to you. Yeah, no news is no news this particular (laughs) week. Well, and I know you mentioned that a couple weeks ago. I've been sort of camp, uh, yeah, let's just keep raising interest rates until the problems resolve themselves, which is why I'm not running the Fed, I guess. Uh, (laughs) So that's probably the only reason, (laughs) right? That has to be the only reason. That, and I don't think I ever worked for Goldman Sachs. I think that helps too. So anyway, I was with some clients this morning, so I appreciate you listening and putting some notes together. So I'm going to actually let you take it away this week and kick us off with some Fed minutes. Yeah, just the Fed stuff. Really, there was a possibility that they would rate hike only because of the fact that the core CPI came in higher than expected. 5.2% was expected. It came in at 5.3, but it's down from 5.5% last month. So inflation is trending in the right direction, even though it wasn't substantial enough in their opinion to really not look at it as a negative. And that with the equities markets being relatively hot lately, there was a chance that they were going to hike their rates, but they didn't do it. And I think a lot of that is appeasing the bond market a little bit. They're allowing people some time. They removed the urgency. So a lot of the big takeaway really came from the minutes, came from what they said after they released the fact that they weren't going to rate hike. And so key points, inflation is sticking around. They do expect that. And then they tempered the market's response by saying there are going to be a couple more rate hikes this year. They have every expectation that another 50 basis points, probably two quarter point hikes later in the year, maybe even starting next month in July. So they really towed this fine line. So we'll see what ends up happening. The equities markets didn't really like the report. I mean, at least if you look at the Dow, which I'll hand that to you. But saying that there's no recession concerns was something else that they said. They really expect GDP to start to pick up and that the fourth quarter expectations, remember the fiscal fourth quarter for the federal government is actually end of September. So we're in the fourth quarter. That combined with the unemployment rate expected to go to 4.1% now, they had thought maybe 4.5%. So inflation stays a little warm. Unemployment is not increasing. And then you have a little higher than expected GDP numbers shaping up for the fourth quarter, all of that allowed them to not hike for now. But just because speed doesn't matter anymore, everybody's just going to wait and see now. We're right back in the same game. Well, and I wonder how much of that is the relative argument based on seasonal expectations too. If they're going to pick a period of the year to say, hey, let's take a break this month, June's a really good time to do it. Great point. No, it's a really good point. So it's a time where markets are much calmer as a general rule. There are less participants. They may not be calmer, so I should say that differently, but there are probably less individual participants in the market at a time when people are just focused on other things. I mean, the sell and may go away. We joke about it regularly, but there's some reality to it. So that may be building into this as well. The assumption, of course, would be if they are expecting additional interest rate hikes, which I don't think anybody can argue isn't completely warranted and may continue for much longer than just the rest of this year, then yeah, to take occasional breathers is certainly not a bad thing. Well, we're still below normal. So people say, oh, someday we're going to get back to normal interest rates. What are normal interest rates? We're still below normal interest rates. So don't get lulled to sleep. Don't assume that someday they're going to cut rates again and we're going to see 2%. 1%, half a percent. That's what was abnormal. That was the outlier event. And so this is normal interest rate policy and activity, and really they should be higher. And that's another thing that Chairman Powell actually did say is there are substantially more rates in the future. Didn't say when, but in order to get back into a normally functioning economy, you have to have rates higher than they are now. So if you're waiting for lower rates, remember David McIlvaney and Kevin Ork have covered this on the commentary. There's 30-year average rate cycles, and that's what we really need to be prepared for. Is right. This could be a decades-plus-long 30 years per event. side. Yeah, per side. Yeah. That's right. Yep. 
So we'll see what ends up playing out. In the meantime, equities flat to no response. Gold initially dipped on the news about $20. We had a high of 1959 this morning. We got as low as 1939 and it came right back up to about 1950. So all said and done flat on the day. Do you want to start with gold? Do you want to start with equities? Sure. We can start with gold being a gold firm and a gold podcast, not a bad place to start. The theme I'm seeing this week and, and last week, you know, we had a very similar conversation last week, but the thing I'm seeing across the board, except for maybe an exception or two, is there seem to be some pretty defined lines in the sand. We brought this up last week with gold. Gold's been trading between its 382 fib and its halfway point back to where the uh, rise started back in March, where we started where around 1800 went up to 202085. 20, so we've been sitting, bouncing back and forth between these two lines in the sand. Where will it break? We don't know. I know that we've talked about maybe a continued little bit of a push down. You know, we've been dollar cost averaging in as we've been bouncing back and forth. But I am keeping a little bit of powder dry. If we do see that 618 retracement, we come back to a trend line, the moving averages come up. So I'm keeping a little bit of powder dry just in case we see an opportunity opportunity like that in gold. I love it. I mean, yesterday, again, this morning for a little bit, we were up, but yesterday we came right back down almost to that trend line in that short-term chart that you put up last week Mm -hmm. on the 50% retracement. And lo and behold, that's exactly where, after the Fed announcement, that's exactly where we dipped down to almost instantaneously, and it served as the bounce point. And so a retest of your support, I just am wondering if it's going to hold too. I'm keeping powder dry as well. Moving over to silver, you know, silver's been in this long rising channel for almost a year now. Well, you know, it started down around 18 bucks when we bought them, then we're up to 25, then we're down to 21, then we're up to 27. Now now we're probably on our way down to like 22 or 23. But silver's just had this massive channel that it's been bouncing back and forth. And silver also, similar concept, right? Like we had a little bit of dip in silver today when it happened, but then it bounced right back up. So again, I think the trend continues to lead the way. The trend in silver is to remain within the channel until proven otherwise. Beatings will commence until morale improves, and that's what we're seeing. But the trending is upwards. The ratios are playing around in the 80s, but ultimately you stretch that timeline out, and it's very clear that the ratios are moving the direction they're supposed to. It's just a slow-moving ship. It really is slow. And if you look at the long-term chart on the gold to silver ratio, it should be slow moving. 2020, 2021, and 2022 had increased volatility. We had some huge swings with record extremes, and that created some good ratio trading opportunity for us. For now, it's acting more like it normally does. Yes, we're down to 81 to 1 again, trending down just a few points here over the last few weeks, but nothing out of that channel either. So eyes on the ratio too. Now, for the next three charts I'm going to bring up, here's where we start to see a theme that I find kind of interesting. So I'm going to start with platinum being more of the industrial metal, and this is going to lead us into looking at the equities market. Platinum hit some legitimate support levels yesterday leading into the FOMC today. Platinum hit a rising channel yesterday. We had a bottom in September. We had another bottom in March. We've got higher lows, higher highs, and we hit that trend line yesterday, which also lines up with the 50% line if you're looking at the start in September and then the end in May when Platinum peaked out. So Platinum yesterday and today has been playing right at that combination of a couple different indicators meeting up right around like 975 to 980. We see that same theme kind of move over. And when I look at the S&P, the S&P hit the top end of a compressing channel itself. You know, you're looking at highs going back to November, December, and then at the beginning of the year, kind of end of January, February. We just hit it again yesterday. So the S&P is coming in on the top end which is the one market we saw move up over the last couple days, comes into the top end trading channel. And I find that interesting leading into the FOMC and the Dow. The Dow did the same thing. It hit a top end level yesterday. And then, like you mentioned, it reversed back down today. So I find it interesting that the industrial metals, as well as the equities market, all kind of led into pricing levels they were going to coming into the FOMC expectations today. 
Yeah, the Dow is actually down three quarters of a percent, down about 225 points as we record. It didn't do that initially when they released the news that they were pausing the rate hikes, but it responded to the details that were released afterwards. So the more Powell talked, the more the Dow went down. S&P and NASDAQ stayed flat, though. We're continuing to see the NASDAQ almost like the tech bubble of the late 90s kind of response here through artificial intelligence driven speculation. Yeah, these are really interesting support and resistance levels that will be fascinating to see what holds and what doesn't, both in gold and the dollar, obviously, in terms of their relationship, but also between the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. Which direction is there going to be a breakout? Sure. I think that's interesting the way you worded that. The longer he spoke, the worse it looked in the equities market. Because usually you see, like, say, what gold did today, right? The second he says no or yes to rate hikes, you have gold drop 20 bucks immediately and then bounce. But when you're looking at something like the Dow, the longer it went on, the more pessimistic the market ended up looking, and you didn't see that same kind of knee-jerk reaction. I think that's pretty telling from a psychological standpoint. Also, because I'm, you know, curmudgeon I wonder how much of that was people asking, hey, so since you stopped interest rate hikes, that means we're going to start lowering them again, right? And then he says no, and then the next that's guy right. in the audience asks the exact same question, just worded differently, because that cracks me up every FOMC, the news pundits that are there interviewing, they ask the same question 13 times. Word and the answer is always, yeah, and the answer is always, <laughs> no, I'm not giving you the punch bowl back. So. Well, don't only listen to what they say at the microphone either. The markets don't always. You know, look at the bond market. It's telling us that either there's not a recession coming on the horizon or the Fed is way behind the curve again here, late to the game. So there's things to listen to that aren't necessarily spoken out of the mouths of humans. So we right. got to watch that market and we got to certainly watch the US dollar. It'll tell the truth a lot of times. Yeah, don't always listen to anybody talking into a microphone. He said into a microphone. <laughs> so the US dollar, this is the one thing I am actually a little interested in. I'm not surprised that the dollar would say show a little bit of weakness with interest rates not going up. What I am surprised is that the dollar also a couple lines in the sand that we've looked at over the last few weeks. Thus far, the dollar is having a hard time getting back up to that 106 and has actually been coming back down now for, what, 10 days? So the dollar index continues to show weakness. Again, I really wanted to see the dollar push up a little bit higher here over the last month. It just hasn't happened. If we get a break below 101, though, that scares me a little bit. Because you're talking about an international dollar with the highest interest rates available in, what, two decades, maybe longer? Well, since Greenspan tried it before the markets cratered, so 15 years. If we can't show stronger dollar internationally while we're raising interest rates or while we're expecting to continue to raise interest rates, it makes me pretty nervous. Well, don't worry, because President Biden said the economy is as healthy and vibrant as he is. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. Did he really? Did you make that up? Okay, you made that up. (laughs) That was a Babylon B. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) I think that's going to have to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. We'll end on Tori's joke. Thank you, Tori. Appreciate it. Hope (laughs) somebody else found that funny besides you and me. So, yeah, again, that's going to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. As always, we appreciate you stopping by. We will continue to keep an eye on things. Watch for those lines in the sand. There is a darn good chance that you start to see these extended things that have been building for months. When they break, they tend to break pretty big one direction or the other. So if you'd like to talk with your advisor at McElvaney Precious Metals to kind of figure out, hey, what's the game plan for the next few months? If it's sell in May and go away, hey, when everyone else has left the table, it's a real good time to start filling your plate. So give us a buzz. We can be reached at 800-525-9556. You can find more info on our website at McElvaney.com. We're on Facebook at McIlvaney Financial or on Twitter at ICA Gold. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.